everyone. So it looks like I've got a uh, request to show one of my guitars in particular in uh, better light and more detail. Um, I actually already had an idea to make a, a new ASMR video that uh, showed me changing strings. Um, so I figured since this guitar needs its strings changed anyway, <laughs> might be a good opportunity to go ahead and uh, give you guys a little look. So here we have the, this is actually a guitar made by ESP. Um, it's actually their LTD line, which is, uh, I believe it's made overseas, but um, it's uh, quite a good quality still. Um, despite not being what they would call a custom, you know, American-made model. So, um, it's definitely one of the nicest guitars I've ever owned and uh, would uh, definitely recommend it if you, if you happen to like really sharp body styles like this one has. Obviously, uh, those of you who play guitar probably know this body style is definitely influenced by the BC Rich Warlock, and uh, I've actually owned a couple of Warlocks. Uh, I think I still do have one in storage um, over the years, but uh, once I started playing these piece, I just kind of stuck with them. So This body style is called the Axe 400. Um, it has the EMG pickups in it. Um, with a two, three position switch. And uh, it has a master tone knob and a master volume that controls both pickups at the same time. So, um, the strings actually go over the bridge and right through the body and uh, the ball ends anchor on the other side of the, the body, which I'll show you in a few minutes. Um, 24 frets, full two octave scale. You can kind of see that each of the double dots signifies the full octave 12 frets at a time. So, Also, the frets themselves are extra jumbo. They're very tall. Um, the closest thing you can get to not actually having a scalloped neck, which would mean that the uh, the wood between each fret would be curved out, which would actually mean that when you press down the strings, you wouldn't be touching the wood. You would only be touching metal to metal. Um, but with the frets this tall, a lot of the time you're in the same situation, and you don't have to press very hard. You get a good accuracy, um, but you have to be careful how hard you press because it's really easy to bend the strings out of tune. This one has the nice kind of a tribal inlay, which does make it a little difficult to see what fret you're actually on. <laughs> so it's a good idea if you play these to uh, get used to being able to play without looking. And here at the headstock, uh, I don't know if you can see from here, but these are actually locking tuners. And you might be able to see there that the strings don't actually wrap around the pegs very much. They just sort of go through the hole and uh, they're locked in. So again, I'll show you that when I take the strings off. And it's got a very nice neck through body design as you can see that makes it very easy especially when you're reaching for the higher frets there's good access to them so it's a very good guitar and as you can see there are the holes where you actually insert the strings you might be able to see the ball ends in there all right Sorry, that might have been a little loud. 
Over here we have uh, my little gadget bag. Um, this probably, I guess, create a bag it's called. <laughs> probably found this in some sort of uh, office supply store, but it just seemed perfect for all the little knickknacks that go along with guitar playing. Uh, so I grabbed one, and I've taken this everywhere that my guitar goes, particularly on the road, uh, because it's a really convenient way to keep all your stuff in one place. Obviously, I still have a toolbox that has to come with me, but this is just kind of the, the daily care bag. So I'm going to open it up. Here we have a, uh, a felt Crown Royal bag, which is actually a very good polish cloth. It somehow doesn't look as purple on the screen as it does to me. And this uh, is just another cotton rag that I use for, you know, wiping off dirt or whatever. We have uh, toothbrushes, which are not for brushing my teeth. <laughs> They just um, are a good way to get into the little metal nooks and crannies, especially on the bridge of the guitar. Obviously a small set of screwdrivers, a little bag where all of my guitar picks go, and a slightly bigger bag, which is where I keep sets of strings in each of these zip open as well. This here never go where, anywhere without this when I'm on the road. This is uh, always in my pocket. Um, my little plastic case that keeps my earplugs in it, or at least one set for the show anyway. I would, uh, of course, have a big supply of these when I leave for, the, for a tour. Uh, and picks as well. A couple of picks in there. And my Mainly these are for cutting the strings. Over here we have the two bottles I might have showed you in the, uh, the other video. One has alcohol in it, rubbing alcohol. It's just for cleaning components. Um, it dries faster than water, so and it also kind of cleans nicely without damaging the paint. Uh, this is string lube, which I've told you about before. Um, basically this I apply to anywhere that the strings touch metal. Um, that's so that the strings last longer and they don't tend to break. Um, I had many miserable shows where I was breaking strings during, you know, during songs, uh, before I discovered this stuff. And once you apply this to the metal contacts, um, you'll have much less problems with breaking strings, at least when the strings are relatively new. And obviously, you know, on a tour you want to change strings as often as you can afford to. I would say about three, every three shows, I would put a new set on. So, got my bag of guitar goodies here. The uh, Best Buy that's near me actually has a guitar shop in it now. So I stopped in and they had the strings and the picks that I use. So I grabbed some. And uh, we're going to go ahead and get quickly started to uh, working on this because, you know, I'm already running kind of long on time here. So let's go ahead and get the strings off real quick. You probably can't see, but these strings look pretty bad. I uh, normally clean them off with alcohol each time before I play them, but um, I've been getting a little bit lazy about my guitar playing. I've not been practicing quite as often. 
and since I have five guitars sitting around, they don't all get a lot of use individually. Um, I have two of these X400s. I also have two of the um, Dave Mustaine signature model Vs that have the eight ball uh, inlaid on the fretboard. Um, not exactly my choice of uh, design, but you might be able to see under here these little screws. When I unscrew them, then those that's how the, the tuners unlock. Anyway, um, but the Dave Mustaine model of LTD guitar was the only V body style that was available, so I went with it. Um, and then the fifth guitar that I have from LTD is uh, the Richard Z model, which is from a guitar player from Rammstein. All right. Looks like we have a visitor. Uh, it's nearly impossible for me to get a set of strings off my guitar without my cat getting involved because he's, for some reason, unable to resist the strings. So. <laughs> Camera's probably not quite capturing that, but he's chasing him around, trust me. Seamus. <laughs> Seamus. Let go. Let go. <laughs> we have three cats. Um, one's a rag doll, which is the white one you see here. We also have a, uh, a Himalayan He's got more um, kind of chocolate-colored points, I guess you could say. Uh, we also have a um, Tonkinese, and she's mostly gray in color. And I need to kind of speed this along here, so. This toothbrush has a bit of alcohol applied to it. Like I said, it's just a nice way to um, try and get some of the dirt and whatever, sweat and so forth. <laughs> Stuff you don't want to know about. It gets all over your guitars when you play vigorously, especially when you play music that's, you know, a little bit uh, energetic, shall we say. <laughs> I'm sure other uh, words have been used to describe the kind of music that I play, but uh, I just try to explain to people that, you know, it takes lots of energy. So. Looks like we're running close to the 15 minutes, so I may just have to do a part two to this video, so... Stay tuned, and we'll flip along to that.